This is Dan from LightedPinballMods.com and Chuck's doing the video recording and he's going to chime in if I miss anything. Now we're going to do at least three different videos. This video we're going to go into an explanation of all the parts that are involved, how they work together, and how they're manufactured. In another video we're going to show these in uh, multiple different games and in a third video we're actually going to show you how to install them. Now you can contact us at lightedpinballmods at gmail.com if our website's not quite set up yet and we're working on our website now. Now we make in 10 different colors. We try to match these as closely to the game original colors we can. We got red, orange, yellow, green, a light blue. Now we also have a rainbow which is obviously not an original in the game but it matches many games white, black, which again was not in original games, but it was very difficult for us to make this, and it matches a lot of games. This is a purple and a dark blue. Now also, here's the colors with them off. So you can see those colors are what you're used to seeing in your pinball machine. Okay, now to start with, we set these up with its own power supply. You'll plug this into the service outlet in your game. Now you could, could theoretically power these plasmas from your game, but they cause some interference. So we found the best answer to that is to isolate it with its own power supply. Guarantees you no interference going into your game. Now all your service outlets, outlets are on all the time, but we have a relay here that will tell the pop bumper when to turn on and when to turn off. So this would plug into your service outlet which would just go into the relay. This is how you get your power. Now the plasma pop bumpers there's actually two parts to this. There's the plasma which is on the top that you can see but there's also a lighted collar that you can see underneath here. There's LEDs in the collar. So you're actually getting two different modifications at once. This collar is mainly designed for the mounting but this adds a great color to it. Now these are all at 3 volts. You don't have any 3 volt in your game. Do not hook these up to a 5 or a 12 or any other volt or you will damage these. There's just no question about it. And that's where this relay comes in. The power is going to come to the relay, and from the relay, there's a little plug. This is going to plug it into everything else. Now, in some of the other videos, we mentioned that the plasma can either be on all the time, sound activated, or can turn on or off as the original plasma in the game did. The exception to that is the newer spike systems, those have to be on all the time or sound activated. Now the way we achieve that is the power is going to come through here. This plug here, this is a standard plug that you might get at Comet using the Comet matrix system. You can plug in alligator clips and what you would most likely use this for is if you wanted to get your plasma to turn on and off as it originally does, you're going to have to cut your light assembly out of your plasma, but you don't have to do any work to the mechanical assembly. You're only really going to do the top of the, the plasma. And here's an example. This is an example of your original, plas uh, your original pop bumper in a game. When you take the top off, there's a light in there. You're actually going to disconnect that light, which is very common. Uh, they're designed to be pulled out and put back in. And when you pull out your light, you're going to have a standard pop bumper uh, body like this. We give you a new pop bumper that's cut differently to do the mounting. This is all you really have to do above the game. You don't do do the wafer uh, other mechanism doesn't get changed at all. Now this is going to control, as I said, so. If you cut the light out of there, this hooks up to the original leads that your pop bumper light went on. So if your 
In your game, if your pop bumper was told to turn on, this would sense it. And it allows electricity to go through to turn off your pop bumper. If your game told your original pop bumper to turn off, the signal wouldn't go through here, it would turn off. So by using this, your pop bumper will turn on and on as originally did. If you want to permanently install it, which is not a difficult thing to do, you would just clip this, use these ends, solder these ends to the original light assembly in your game. Now, if you always want to have your pop bumper on, or if you're working with a spike system, and you want to hook it up to GI, you would plug this in, this replaces a light, then when your GI turns on, tells the relay to turn on, your pop bumper would turn on. When you turn off the game, power to this goes off, tells the relay to turn off, turns off power to the pop bumper. Now let's talk about the plasma itself. There's a lot of different components with this. Now first off, this particular plasma I have here has a little crown. This looks like a traditional pop bumper cap you would have. Now we also make a flat top which saves you about an eighth of an inch in height. One of the main thing about these is this version is about three eighths inch taller than a regular plas a regular pop bumper so you need to have the distance. And I find just your pinky, if you can put a pinky over your original pop bumper and if it's going under a rail for example that tells you you got the space for it. Now we take a core plasma. Now all plasmas are handmade. That's just the way that they are, uh, the original core, so there is a slight variation. Example on this one is the gap here. It's a little bit more than the gap there. That's going to be expected, or I won't say it's expected, but it's not unusual. Now we actually take the plasma, which is a glass product, and we mold it, and we put a high impact resin around the plasma. That's going to protect it. That's going to keep it from getting damaged from the ball. Very, very strong. You will not have an issue with this. So that protects the top. Now we also colorize it. We work very hard to get the exact colors to match the game. And we use different processes to colorize it. But in this blue one, for example, it takes us 12 steps to get this proper color on the plasma. Now this next part here is what we call a collar. This is actually how you're going to mount it into the game. We also hand make that in a resin mold and we put LEDs, you can see an LED at the end, we put LEDs in there that will light up, it gives it a nice glow below the plasma. Now, this is the body that you're going to get with the plasma pop bumper and it's basically a standard pop bumper with areas cut out and with holes. This lines up with, and normally the wires aren't going to come from here, normally the wires are going to come out of the back top, but this fits into a groove you can see there and there's four holes along the perimeter. You want to put screws which are supplied in at least three of those four holes that will lock this plasma in place. Now on the back of the plasma is a control where you can have this on all the time. You'd have this, it's shipped in that position. Most of the time you're going to have it in that position. If you're going to work off your GI you're going to have it in that position. If you're going to go off the regular pop bumper circuitry you're going to have it in that position. But in the center there's also a sound activated, and if you're going to go in that mode, when there's sounds made in your game, your plasma is going to turn on and off. Using, you would use your GI connection for that. Now, in your standard body, there's two wires. You're going to pull those two wires out for the existing light assembly. On here there's two wires. These wires come pre-pinned. So there's no soldering involved in this. When you put the new body in the game, you're going to slide these wires through these holes. So on the bottom of your play field, you're going to have two wires. These two wires are a few feet in length, and they're going to go 
to the wiring harness. We have it color coded. You're just going to plug the pin in and it'll click in place for the red. Plug the pin in, it'll click in place for the black. That'll plug into your board. So that's how the plasma gets powered through the board and this is how your plasma gets controlled. Now the tools for installation, very few. Standard screwdriver, you're going to want a pair of dikes or cutters to take off your old light and a pair of tweezers or needle nose are recommended for pulling out the wire. But it actually only takes, once you've done a few of these or, or understand the process, only takes about 10 minutes. It's very quick. Now we sell these in eaches. Oh, you also are going to get uh, screws to screw down this relay to a surface. You're also going to get zip ties to connect all your wires. Now, if you're buying multiples, we do offer a discount in multiples and we'll only send you one power supply to plug into your service outlet, but we'll include a power splitter that this will go to a relay. Each plasma has to has it have its own relay. This tells it again when to turn on, when to turn off. It also converts the uh, DC, uh, AC that's in the system to DC, <clears throat> even though this is a DC power supply, the switching apparatus is still controlled from your AC circuitry in the game. So Chuck, is there anything that you think I've missed on this? No, I think we got most of it. It's, and like Dan was saying, as far as the wires on your body, you're going to put them right through your existing wire holes where your light assembly was taken out. So that's the easiest way there. Now some people do have a question on the price, and as you can see, there's a lot that's involved. The plasma, the core plasma, has to be handmade and manipulated. It has to be colorized, then it has to be protected with a resin, and then the collar, which has the LEDs, is a separate piece that gets made, that gets uh, added on there, and then of course everything has to be wired in goes to a custom circuit panel that's specifically designed from this as well as the power supply and the small hookup apparatus. Most people are used to a plasma pop bumper just being a standard LED light that you can plug in. If you want to have the plasma you're going to have to have more to hook it up. It is one of the most impressive noticeable mods that you can do to your game and the life expectancy of the plasmas is tremendous. It should last the life of the game. Matter of fact, if you sell your game, you can transfer your plasma to a new game. They're not tied into Once it's installed, you can see they can be removed. A great addition to your game. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for more videos to come. Dan and Chuck, lightedpinballmods.com.